greetings to all learners myself sharda devre associate professor government college of pharmacy amravati maharashtra welcomes you to lecture 31 import and export of medicinal and aromatic plants and derived products under the week 7 market analysis and success stories those learners who want to get involved in the import and export of medicinal plants first need to understand that which department of india is involved in the foreign trade or import and export of the products so directorate general of commercial intelligence and statistics that is a dgcis is involved in policy making uh, rules making or implementation of the various uh, frame lines for the import and export there is a one system that is a harmonized system or in short form it is called as hs system which is developed and maintained by the world customs organization that is a wco and the same system is adapted by the india as a indian trade classification which is commonly known as a itc or hs and this system groups the various products into the certain category and according to the category there are the certain code numbers are given to the products so here is the example that how the codes are given to the various medicinal plants like the seeds of medicinal plants or leaves of medicinal plants and accordingly to the roots of medicinal plants or barks and like this so different uh, products uh, the different numbers different categories are given by this uh, dgcis or different hs codes are there in the uh, foreign trade or throughout the world such a codes are utilized for example mulethi or jizipas sataiva that is a unab or majufal that is a quercus infectoria or hing which we commonly use in our kitchen these all are uh, all crude drugs or plants are not cultivated in india and hence india is totally depend upon its import while uh, senna and isab gol are cultivated in india and hence india export these medicinal plants in this slide the presentation of the average export value and average import value of some of the medicinal plants and derived products is mentioned and here you can see that there is a good export value for the medicinal plant extracts as well as psyllium seeds senna leaves vinca rosea piper longum or cassia tora seeds hina leaves while there is a good import value for the gums that are not cultivated in india or extracts of the plants which are not cultivated in india as well as the chirata then cube licoris pyrethrum agarwood etc to start with the export the one has to register the company with the customs so that they can become the authorized dealers then the copies of various uh, documents like the vat cell tax registration income tax returns company's balance sheet of previous years are needed and for country specific for example in the usa it is necessary that company must get registered with the us fta uh, under the us bioterrorism act and it is also necessary that a certificate of analysis of exporting medicinal plant is required by the us custom as well as the exporter also need to have an exim code that just we have seen in the previous slide that there is a hs code or itc or uh, there is a uh, other type of the hsn code which are country specific and these all codes are helpful for maintaining the uh, various import and export commodities now in case of the plant states uh, species listed under the annex 2 of the sites uh, and not listed in the schedule 6 of the wildlife protection act or schedule 2 of the exim policy export is allowed irrespective of the wild or cultivation so whether the plant material is obtained from wild or cultivation uh, sources there are no restrictions until and unless uh, that is if it is uh, listed in the site sites means the uh, it is the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora so if these species are endangered or threatened or they are get the, they are about to get extinct then this type of list plays the very important role otherwise for other remaining plants or plant derived products uh, you can easily do the export 
and uh, it is also necessary that exporter have to get the certificate of legal procurement issued by the jurisdictional dfa uh, because uh, you cannot uh, import or export the material which you have not uh, purchased or which you have not procured so that particular um, type of the requirement is there then uh, there are other type of the means uh, like the export of derivatives extracts and formulations which may contain portion extracts of plants on the prohibited list but only in unrecognizable and physically inseparable form is allowed and that no certificate from any authorities whatever shall be required for their exports so uh, this is um, the important thing that uh, for extracts or formulations and their derivatives you don't need the um, any type of such a above requirement that is the certificate of legal procurement then the export of site listed medicinal plant is allowed only on seven ports or through the seven ports that is mumbai kolkata cochin delhi chennai that is a tutti corin and amritsar now import of sites listed medicinal plants that is endangered medicinal plants it was not existing before 2006 but after that uh, it uh, this type of the restrictions uh, um, were um, implemented through the uh, various amendments and this ministry of commerce and industry department of commerce uh, issued the notification related to that otherwise there are no negative list of imports you can do the lot of import and export on many things and uh, the necessary things uh, for or fulfillment uh, of the following requirements are necessary that is import permit under the sites from the regional deputy director that is a wildlife then export permit of the sites from the exporting country and for import of seeds for planting sowing import permit under the plants fruits and seeds is also required so sites is specifically for the endangered it is the related for the endangered species of flora and fauna there are various regulations uh, as just we have seen that wildlife protection act 1972 according to that there is a list in the sites appendix then there is a biological diversity act and next it is the uh, exim policy means it is related to the uh, codes certain codes hsn code or hs code and this helps to regulate the wildlife and this type of the convention that is a site that is a convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora this put uh, effect via the provisions of the foreign trade and it's necessary to follow the rules of uh, this particular exim policy under the sites for the uh, negative list of exports and for the biological diversity act already we have studied in detail in previous lectures that this particular act has given the provisions to utilize the nation's biodiversity for uh, the, uh, means, uh, its own economic development or own commercial uh, utilization and there must not be the any type of biopiracy or bioprospecting should be done but it should play the role in the nation's development then uh, there is export of sites listed medicinal plants means suppose if there are the red list plants endangered plants there are the plants which are threatened which uh, uh, means in some time they will be get extinct so for that there are certain provisions that are mentioned in this uh, site and according to that the exporters need to follow they have must get the certificate of legal uh, procurement Uh, for the medicinal plants and their parts they must have the certificate of cultivation if they are involved in the uh, cultivation and these uh, formats are also given and according to the local agriculture forest authorities these permits can be obtained then there is a transit uh, pass uh, which usually the concerned divisional forest officers give it to the farmers or the buyers and then the sites export permit this is issued by the sites management authority 
uh, it is the proof that the source of the medicinal plant material is under the export and uh, it gives that type of the validity. So in this lecture, we have learned about the import and export of the medicinal plants, aromatic plants and derived products. So most important, it is that the company need to be get registered with the customs and fulfill the all requirements according to the country. Then they must have the knowledge about the Biodiversity Act or Wildlife Protection Act. They must know about the uh, HS code, ITC code or HSN code. These are the codes uh, which are the combination of the alphabets and numbers or which is called as alpha numerical numbers that are uh, given to the various commodities like uh, medicinal plants also like for seeds different or for roots different for extracts different and the uh, knowledge of uh, sites that is for the convention related for the endangered uh, plant species and then derived products uh, about the exim policy which is also related with the code that are useful in the import and exports then uh, it is necessary to understand that most of the uh, farmers or uh, tribal people uh, that are collectors or uh, the growers they cannot directly involved in the export and import so those middle main those who are involved they have to make the affidavit uh, from the farmers that they are ready to uh, sell it through the um, middlemen and then thus they instead of the certificate of the legal procurement such affidavits can be uh, produced for the import and export so hope this lecture has uh, um, given the idea to the all learners of this particular course that how they can start the import and export or at least the basic requirement for the uh, import and export of the medicinal and aromatic plants and derived products thank you